As we're filming this, it's a very strange situation because we're at the peak of the coronavirus here in the UK. And so we're in this sort of partial lockdown period where we're only allowed out for certain times. So well-being is even more important now than ever. At the same time, it's even harder to get. So today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips on well-being. These are just uh, some very, very practical tips that uh, people have told me that they do and people have told me these work really well. 10 top practical tips for dealing with the coronavirus lockdown. Tip one, create and stick to a schedule. Morning. So another day in lockdown begins. Thankfully, everyone in this household is well. And so we've got to try and make the most of the, of the opportunities that this situation brings whilst dealing with all the challenges. Fortunately, as I am every morning, I'm armed, with my porridge, my water, and a banana. And importantly, my schedule. My schedule for the day. Having a schedule is always important. Right now, it's key. It underpins all of the good practices that we're gonna talk about in this video. The schedule should not just be about work or school. It should include everything from the moment you get up in the morning to the moment you go to bed at night. And it should contain a balance of activities, including work or schoolwork, household chores, exercise, got some family time in it, and some time to learn something new or improve existing skills or to create something. But also you should plan in social time. And if you can, because this is really important, time spent doing some really good things in the community. Having a schedule doesn't mean that you have to do the same things every day. The schedule can be different, but the important thing is that the start times and the finish times stay roughly the same, and they should be about the same as you would do before the lockdown. Let's have a look what I got on. <clears throat> I mean, people often think that having a schedule means that you're gonna be busy the whole time, but that's not true. I've got rest programmed in for today. See, you can program in rest in unstructured times, but of course, what's interesting about that is that this is only pleasurable and valuable to you if it doesn't happen every day. If every day you're sitting around not doing very much without any real plan and not filling your day with things, then the rest and the unstructured time ceases to be pleasurable. Remember also that weekends and holidays can be very different. The advantage of a schedule is that you can make your holidays and weekends completely different from any other day. Remember we've got a bank holiday coming up soon. So let's actually make them very different. Do something completely different on that day go for a different walk, some, do something that you've never done before, or just make that your unstructured day. So schedule, having a schedule is really important, it underpins everything else that we're gonna talk about. Tip two, keep exercising. You don't need me to tell you how important exercise is. You know that it's important. And there's no reason why this partial lockdown should stop you from exercising. It's gonna be different, but actually it should be able to train just the same. In fact, for some of you, you're gonna have a little bit more time on your hands. So you might be able to train even more. So my advice to you is if you're able to do it, schedule in two exercise routines a day. There's two types of exercise, of course. You can train indoors, you can train on flexibility, strength, balance, posture. You can do all that sort of work indoors, and then you can do some good cardiovascular work outdoors if you're able to. It's absolutely beautiful weather here at the moment, perfect for a walk. At the moment here in the UK, 
We're allowed to get out once a day for exercise. So let's make the most of this beautiful weather if you're able to and get out and do some good cardiovascular activity. As long as you're not in isolation, as long as you're physically able to, let's get out there. There's all sorts of things we can do. We can do walking, go for a good walk. We can do running. We can go cycling. We could go scootering, skateboarding, uh, all sorts of things. Gardening, what a brilliant activity gardening is. The allotments, you're still allowed to go and work in your allotments, but if you do, take it from me. Make sure you stick to the rules of the Allotment Association, otherwise you'll be in trouble. And even when the weather changes, that still is nothing to stop you. Just wrap up a bit warmer, and if it's raining, don't worry, still get out there. It's only water coming out of the sky. It's not going to hurt you. There are videos on Pilates, on yoga, or easy hit sessions, hard hit sessions, hit sessions for young people, hit sessions for older people. There's exercise routines for your abs, for your legs, for your upper body. And there's obviously lots of good routines on this YouTube site. So if you're able to, please use the resources which are, which are out there. If you don't want to use any of those videos, I'm sure you can make up your own routines and make the most of this time. Tip three, attack your snacks. One of the difficulties that we've got at this time of partial lockdown is the tendency to snack more than we would normally do. And that's because we might be a little bit more stressed than normal. We might not be sleeping so well. And some people have got more time on their hands. And so when that happens, people tend to reach for the biscuit tin. And these are just sugar, they're empty calories. So we've got to find some better alternatives to snack on. And there are lots of good options. Let's put this away. Let's put it away and let's put it outside because there's lots of better things that you can snack on. As lots of people know, my favorite thing to snack on is carrots. Just get yourself a raw carrot, cut it up into batons, and you've got something really nice and crunchy and healthy to snack on throughout the day. You could try tomato. Tomatoes are fruit, you can snack on fruits. Remember, just limit your intake of citrus fruits to about three portions a day, two or three portions a day. You'd have bananas as well. Um, but remember, if you eat too much fruit, then it's, it's high in sugar, it may be natural sugar, but it should be all the same. What about dried fruit? Dried fruit, really high in fiber, all sorts of other nutrients. You've got raisins, you've got prunes, you've got apricots. All very good, perfect snacking food. Remember, you don't have to stop snacking, you just have to keep snacking healthily. Tip four, drink up. Tip number four, hydrate. Keep drinking water on a regular basis throughout the day. This will keep yourself energized, um, will stop you from losing your temper a little bit, will help to make sure that you can keep concentrating, and it's really good for you. Don't try anything else. Water is what you need. Fizzy drinks, they're full of sugar. Tea, coffee, I'm not saying don't drink tea and coffee, I'm just saying when it comes to hydration, just clear water. Don't eat anything clever, just clear water. This is about just over a pint. I'm gonna drink maybe four or five glasses of this a day. Have your water next door to you so you don't have to keep getting up, going downstairs or going into the kitchen to get yourself your drink. Just keep sipping it regularly throughout the day and this will make a difference. Tip five, manage your gaming. Now, this is going to be my most important tip for some of you out there, including the lad behind the camera here and his school friends. And that is manage your gaming. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking he's an old bloke. He doesn't understand about gaming, but I like a bit of gaming. I even think I'm pretty good at a certain football game that I shan't mention. I'm not saying don't do any gaming. All I'm suggesting is manage your time. 
I know there's some of you out there spending six, seven, eight, nine hours a day gaming. It really isn't good for you. I know you don't realize it, but it's not good for you. It affects your moods and it stops you from doing other things. The thing is, gaming is designed to be addictive. So it's no wonder that you're doing it. It's designed to affect your mood and it's designed to be easy to do. So you've really got to work hard to manage your gaming. Here's my tip. Two hours of gaming, after that, take yourself a break. Do something else, a break of at least an hour and then get back to do it if you want to do it. Ideally, go and do something else. But if you want to go back, get back and do it. If you don't do that, if you just keep gaming throughout the day, not only do you waste lots and lots of time, but also it really isn't very good for your mood and uh, not very good for the way you feel about yourself. Tip six, avoid the news. What science has done, uh, what relationship there is between the viruses that have circulated in Liverpool and Liverpool. And here's my next tip, and it's arguably the most controversial, and that is avoid the news. Now, it doesn't mean to say don't watch any news. Yes, sure, you've got to keep up to date with the headlines, but avoid watching lots and lots of news programmes. It just makes you feel stressed, makes you feel anxious, makes you upset. The thing is, there really isn't any news. There's only one piece of news right now. So you don't have to spend lots and lots of time watching exactly the same thing. If you can avoid watching the news as much as possible, then that really helps you to avoid a bit of stress and a bit of anxiety. Tip seven, stay social. Talk to you next week. See you then, look forward to that. Bye-bye. Bye. And here's my next tip for you. Stay social. Yeah, we're in this period of lockdown, but you can still speak to your friends. There's plenty of apps out there which uh, help you to speak to your friends on a regular basis, have video conferencing, do phone calls. You can even chat to them as in the streets as long as you stay two metres apart and as long as you don't block up the paths for everyone else. Make sure you keep social, keep chatting with people, plan these into your schedule so that you can make sure that you're sociable as often as possible. Tip eight, learn a skill. Here's my next tip for you. Use this as an opportunity to learn a new skill. Some of you may have a little more time than normal, so make the most of that time and learn something new. Learn something that you hadn't learned before, or take the time to be really creative. Draw, paint, learn a musical instrument, learn to sing. There's a really good opportunity. Plan that into your schedule and that will really make a difference. Tip nine, do something different. The trouble that we've got at the moment is that every day sort of merges into one. They're all very much the same. So here's a really important tip. Do something different. Weekends, make Saturdays different, make Sundays a completely different day. And when it's time for holiday, we've got a bank holiday coming up, schedule in something completely different. Use your schedule to make sure that what you're doing on these weekends and on these holidays is completely different from what you would normally do. Have an unstructured day. Do something that you've never done before. Go on a completely different walk. Try a brand new activity. Just try, to, just try to make it different. And that's just going to make you feel a lot more normal. Tip 10. Sleep well. Know what's um, what's the purpose of that? The idea of it is there to be a soup for it, but so it's getting late. It's the end of another day here in lockdown. It's time for me to go to bed. The trouble is that uh, during this lockdown period, many of us have struggled to sleep, and that could be for a number of reasons. 
It might be that we're a little bit worried or anxious about things. It might be that we haven't been exercising enough or that we haven't been outside enough. Or it might be that we've been spending too much time on our computer screens or on our tablets or on our phones. And for some of you out there, it might be simply that you've just been spending too much time gaming. Gaming is one of the main things that interferes with sleep. The other thing that's been happening is that people's sleep times have been gradually drifting back. People have been going to bed later and later and then getting up later and later. And whilst it feels fine at the time, people end up feeling not so good. So we all know how important sleep is. So here's just a few simple tips. To try and get keep your sleep on track during this period. Firstly, make sure you keep exercising. Make sure you exercise as much as you can during the day and make sure you get out if you're able to. Secondly, make sure that before you go to bed, you do something really relaxing. So that could be just watching some, some television that you don't have to think too much about. It could be reading a book or it could be just relaxing and doing a little bit of mindful meditation. Thirdly, make sure that you're not using computer screens, tablets or phones for at least an hour before you go to bed. These are blue screens and they interfere with the sleep hormone. Make sure that you're scheduling your sleep times, the times you're going to go to bed and the time that you're going to get up into your schedule and stick to that. And lastly, the most important tip, please, please make sure that you stop your gaming at least two hours before you go to bed. Gaming is one of the main things that's going to keep you awake and it's going to stop you from sleeping properly. So, time for bed. Good night. Okay, hope you found those useful. Thanks for listening. Thank you to Ben from Behind the Camera. He's done a really good job. Also, lots and lots and lots of good ideas. Make sure you click subscribe. There's a circle peering over my left shoulder. Click that. And uh, that means if you click the notification bell, I think that's what you told me to say, is it? Click the notification bell, and that means you won't miss any of the really good things to come. Click like if you like it. The thumbs up. Click that if you really like this. I hope you find it useful. If you've got any questions for me, then please... Um, leave some comments in the comments box and I'll get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, stay well, stay connected. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>